With the click of a button or a short drive to the post office, your mail is delivered. But if you wanted to send a letter in the 1920s, it was quite the journey. Cronkite News reporter Ben Brown is outside the old Phoenix post office downtown to show us the old way those pilots navigated that are still around today. Concrete arrows are scattered across the U.S., 12 of which still remain here in Arizona. It sounds primitive, but it was very effective. And that's exactly how the first airmail pilots navigated the skies. They had to develop some innovative ways because they didn't have the, uh, the fancy navigational systems. By 1924, along with the concrete arrows, approximately 1,500 beacons lit the way. They've been using those big concrete arrows. They were about 50, 60, 75 feet uh, uh, long, and they were painted bright yellow. And they just pointed, this is the way, <laughs> just, just follow, the bear, follow the arrow. It was really flying by the seat of your pants. In the 1920s, the United States Post Office Department, with funding from Congress, created the Transcontinental Air Mail Service that spanned from New York to San Francisco. During World War II, most of the beacons were taken down due to the scarcity of metal. And although this tower behind me wasn't built in the 1920s to deliver mail, most of the beacons look similar to this. Pilots flew from each arrow and beacon, guiding them along the route to deliver the mail. Jack Knight was a friend of my dad's, and he was very famous because he flew the first all-night airmail through snowstorms and everything else. Rather than several days by train, and, uh, mail took only 30 so hours to go across country by air. But once World War II broke out, these concrete arrows and beacons slowly disappeared. They were kind of worried about World War II, uh, that the enemy pilots could be able to follow those arrows if they were coming from New York to uh, Los Angeles. Although these concrete arrows are now harder to come by, they still capture the imaginations of people who run across them. It fascinates me, and especially when I'm flying along and I say, oh, there's one of those arrows. How cool. The arrows do show up on Google Earth Maps, but those aren't updated. Last time I checked, there appeared to be, to, there appeared to be about 18 or so left here in the state of Arizona. In downtown Phoenix, Ben Brown, Cronkite News.